Hey everyone, Shane Sands here, United in Christ Jesus, and Happy New Year! Now you might be going, Shane, it's not New Year's. We're not January 1st. You're right, and I'm not even recording this on January 1st. It is January 4th, actually, as we speak. My eyes are moving. Yeah. Camera's here, and I'm looking here. Sasquatch is there. Nebraska's there. Yeah. Go figure. Crazy 2024 already. So I actually had this board up before Happy New Year. I did it on New Year's Eve. It was my full intent to actually record it and have it out on New Year's Day. Obviously that didn't happen, so please forgive me. And so we are getting ready to jump into I what I think is pretty awesome open topic to begin 2024. And a shout out to Caleb and Luke. Uh, I work with these two young men. I have been blessed in being used in their life to encourage and exhort them, uh, challenge them. But I've also been blessed by their questions and their views. And you know, they, they make me laugh. We have serious times. Uh, they're just, they're two young men that I see have a desire to have Christ honored and exalted in all that they do, think, or say. And I know they're still growing, I know, but you know what? What a blessing that God has put them in my life. And we just get to be around each other. They're awesome. They came up with both of these. Luke, fallen will. Caleb, personal holiness. So I'm really grateful for them coming up with this. And when I thought about it and was praying about uh, what to, how to begin the new year with, this is the one. And it really, I think, sets the tone for this year. So with that, I want to start off this one with a very short prayer, and we're going to jump into this uh, and, and, and may Christ be honored and exalted, God glorified. Father, we do come before you <clears throat> seeking, seeking your wisdom, seeking your understanding, seeking your word by your spirit. As we discuss two aspects of our lives, each and every believer's lives, no one is excluded from this. And it's very important. And you do give us clarity in your word. And for many, one or both are very challenging. To some, they're in full agreement. To some, there's areas of gray. And yet, Father, you are very clear in your word. Help us to look at these. May you grant me to be filled and empowered by your spirit to speak on this in a manner worthy of your calling and gospel. And may those who see and hear this also receive it by the spirit so that they may glorify you, Father, through your Son, by your spirit, that they too would walk in a manner worthy of your calling and gospel. It is in Christ and for his sake that I ask this, and I thank you for hearing and answering. Amen. All right. So, coffee time. And yes, it is 8.30 at night. I'll have a couple of prayer requests. Well, one prayer request predominantly at the end of this. But, all right. So... There's something out there where we're not going to get into the doctrine on free will and, and whether or not God preserves free will or do we have the capacity for free will. <clears throat> we're not going to go into the debate on both sides. Very clearly, there's two schools of thought. Uh, you have... Those from the doctrines of grace, you have those also think of uh, 
uh, Whitfield, Wesley, those types of ones. And one says that God is most glorified in preserving man's free will in his decision and in his pursuits of God. The other side says, no, man does not have a free will. Man does not have the capacity to do anything to pursue or choose God. For once man sinned, God looked down and applied Adam's sin to all of mankind. You have the two schools of thought. Scripture clearly shows that we are fallen, that we do not seek after God. We do not pursue God. Is it true that we must make a choice? Yes. Is it true that we must repent? We must we must cry out to God. Must we actually have some part in this? Yes, it's that, that's it's true. There is a tension in God's scripture that tells us about the sovereignty of God and the fallenness and the responsibility of man. This is true. And I'm not going to go through all of this. I am going to tell you very clearly that we are fallen and we do not have the capacity to act freely, really in anything, but particularly, and for this video, specifically toward God. And we're going to look at Genesis chapter 6 and Genesis chapter 8, two probably well-known chapters, uh, the flood. God says, hey, he looks on all of mankind and it tells us that the intent, the the very part, being, mind, heart of man was toward on evil continually. It was absolutely a vile, despicable world continually the corruption after Adam's sin, it went downhill to a point it was just wicked. To where it says God was sorry that he created mankind. Flood happens. Everything on land gone. Birth gone. After Noah comes out of the ark, he starts making sacrifices. But God says these things after the sacrifices, the aromas coming up, and God says he's not going to destroy the world again. There's always going to remain the season. And it says that from the youth, from that mankind, from, from their youth, from the beginning, the inclination toward evil is in all of man. Not that it's continual. There's a difference. There is a difference. But the inclination is still there. And the only people who are alive at the time are Noah, wife, or Noah, daughters, and sons. That's it. Daughter-in-law, sons. There, there's only eight people. Eight people alive. And God says the inclination. <laughs> there's no way now around this that the attitude of man after the flood, while Noah had found favor in God's sight, is still toward evil. We are a fallen will. We are not a free will. The very idea of free is you're not under any constraints. You're not uh, being... Uh, pressed in on any side under any constraints of any influence when you make decisions or you do anything, if you are free, truly free, then you act on the outside of any influence whatsoever. There are only two people, three, that have ever been on this earth 
who can say that they had free will. Adam, Eve, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Adam and Eve, and then they sinned. The Lord Jesus Christ came in the likeness of sinful flesh, and he never sinned in thought, word, or deed. Only Jesus had complete free will, and he is the one who overcame. To him be the glory and honor and praise forever. He alone is worthy of all praise and honor and glory. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ. Mankind has a fallen will. We all act under the constraints of our flesh. We have this dueling war, Galatians 5. And so a fallen will will lead us to always go toward evil. And that is Genesis chapter 8. Go look it up. I probably won't post it here, but look it up. Genesis chapter 8, I think verse 21. 821, I believe it is. Or hold on, just so we can have it clear. Let's go to it. Yes. Uh, the Lord smelled the soothing aroma, and the Lord said to himself, I will never again curse the ground on account of man, for the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth. And I will never again destroy every living thing as I have done. The intent, the inclination. If you go back over into Genesis chapter 6, I want to say Genesis chapter 6, chapter 5, I mean verse 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every, every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Two massive changes. Two. One, there is no way around it. It's just despicably bad, vilely bad. The other, now the inclination in chapter 8, verse 21, the inclination is the intent, the inclination of man's heart is evil from his youth. There's a difference now, but from his youth, it's toward evil. So I know it sounds like I'm browbeating number one right here, and I'm trying not to, but it's in our nature to rebel against God. It's in our nature to listen to our flesh. It's in our nature, and I don't want to say a new creation, in our flesh. I need to say this before salvation, absolutely, absolutely no filter. We are headlong and our inclination is toward evil. After salvation, when we become a new creation, we start loving the things that God loves and hating the things that God hates. A change happens. And while we see in Galatians 5 and we see in other scriptures, there's a war. Romans 8 is another good one. The flesh and the spirit are at war with one another. It's, God is clear on it. So <clears throat> it is important as we go into 2024 that you understand, and please get this, there is a war raging inside your body. It is continual. It does not take a break. There is no, okay, hold on. Let's go over and get a water break. No, it's continual. And it is the flesh against the spirit. And these are in conflict. Now, for the believer, we know that scripture tells us that greater is he who is in us than he is in the world. We will overcome. God is the one who makes us stand. He will bring us through. But there is a war. war. And because of a fallen will... We must wage a war by the Spirit. There's no other way about it. So we have a fallen will, not a free will. Jesus Christ had a free will and never sinned, thought, word, or deed. Adam and Eve had a free will. 
at least that we know of by scripture, and they sinned. Now we're going to jump down here. Number two. Number two says personal holiness. Okay, Shane, if I have a fallen will and there's this war and I'm supposed to be, you know, fighting this fight, but hey, you just got done saying God's going to bring me home. What does it matter? I should just go out and live my life. I mean, I, it's okay. Everyone's got their little vices. You know what? It is all right. But is that what God says? Is that the way a believer will look at Scripture and the cross of Christ? Will we look at Calvary and go, Christ died for my sins. So I can just got my fire insurance and I can go live my life. Is that what God says? The answer is no. And some people say, I've heard this one before. Holiness is Christ in me. Ooh, that one sounds really pretty. And in some ways that is true. Only God in you. But when it's used in an attempt to give you the ability to act in your flesh and for the flesh, it's terrifying. Because there's nowhere in Scripture where we're told that. Nowhere. None. Absolutely. Positively. We are not told that at all. You'll say that because of number one, we must fight this war by the Spirit and walk in holiness. So I was recently just blessed, actually New Year's Eve, to finish rememorizing First Peter. And in chapter one, here's what God tells us through Peter. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lust which were yours in it, your ignorance. But like the Holy One who called you, Holy One who called you, God, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. Okay, so that's the command, but here's the why. Because it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. It doesn't get any more serious than that, but wait. If you address as Father the one who impartially judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay on earth, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, and here you go, but with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. God the Father does not take lightly having to offer up his own son and shed his blood. And when you or I or anyone who calls themselves a believer and takes no grievance over sin or thinks lightly about sin, you mock the sacrifice of God on your behalf. I will not put that any lighter. If you think it's okay, I'm a believer and I can live with my girlfriend or I can have sex with my girlfriend as often as I want. And you know what? Hey, God wants, likes me and takes me just as I am. Or you know what? As it tells us, for sufficient is the time past for you to have carried out the desire of the Gentiles, having pursued a course of sensuality, lust, drunkenness, carousing, uh, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. Also First Peter. Christ shed his blood. Romans 8 tells us, 
he who did not well withhold his own son, but offered him up at the beginning of Romans 8. For what the law could not do, God did in sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. How about 1 John chapter 4? And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Big word means satisfy the wrath. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No, friends, we're called to walk in holiness. And that personal holiness is that you are quorum Dio, in the face of God. You every day sit or walk, act, sleep. Everything you do is in the presence of Almighty God. You walk, you think, your heart beats, God sees it. And our lives are to reflect Christ in such a way that in our behaviors, in our thoughts, our attitudes, our words, our actions, our deeds, whatever we do in uh, word or deed, we do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Friends, there is no, no excuse, no other way around it. People who know me know that I like to laugh and play and talk and joke around. I've got several loves after Christ, after God, several loves in my life. And the first is my wife, hands down, bar none, my wife. After that, I've got things that I like. The idiot cat, he's pretty cool. Nebraska. Love Nebraska football. Shooting. I like to shoot. Gosh. A couple of things I really like. In all of those things, Christ needs to be reflected. So even if I'm at my job and I'm laughing and joking and playing around, people still have to know that my heart and my thoughts are intent are walking pleasing before God the Father in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of his spirit. And if they don't know that, shame on me. Shame on me. Personal holiness is a obligation, Romans 8, that Christ will ever be honored and exalted for not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son so that all may honor the Son even as they honor the Father. Notice that, even as. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. And we honor Christ when we walk in a manner worthy of his calling and gospel, when we walk in his steps. Friends, read First Peter. I tell people all the time, First John is like, how do you know if you're a Christian? The litmus test. Are you really a believer? First Peter is the standard operating procedure for the Christian life. You want to know how to live as a Christian? Read First Peter. And First Peter is all about walking in a manner worthy of the Lord's calling and gospel, walking in holiness. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. There are so many things. So I want to close off 2024, uh, the beginning. Happy New Year 2024, not closing off. We just started. Friends, when we wake up, we have to come before God, asking him, begging him, pleading with him, seeking his face, that he would fill us, that we would be renewed in the spirit of our mind, that our hearts would be directed towards the cross and to Christ and where he is, 
preach the gospel to ourselves. Praise God every day for his saving you and that he He loved you so much and loved the world so much that he sent his only begotten son. Friends, we need to remember where we have been, where we are, and where we're going. We have to have our eyes on Christ all the time. We have to, by the Spirit, be putting the death, the deeds of this flesh. We have to look to Christ continually. We have to offer up prayers supplications to the father asking him to keep us and that we would be strengthened and filled with the joy of his salvation and that our lips could declare his praises we we are we need to continually seek the face of god to walk in holiness and when you do that the world is going to hate you there will be many people who say, that's so nice of you and kind. And I'm not saying that you can engage with so much stuff at work. There might be places where the way you honor God is by your behavior and by your work ethic. But by no means does that excuse you from not telling the truth. First Peter, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is within you, that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. You are not excused. Even Daniel, when he knew the document was signed, what it would cost him to go be thrown into the lion's den, windows open, and he continued to pray. Sometimes, God may very well put you in a position to see if you will deny him so that you will not get in trouble. You can't do that. We all fall. But the fact is, we are called to walk in holiness because God is holiness and he has commanded it. And that is why it is so important that if you have brothers or sisters, text them, email them, phone call them. If you see them, pray with them, encourage them. <sighs> I like to have little scripture cards with me to hand out to people. I like to have gospel tracts with me. <sighs> I'm, there's so many ways that we can reach the people that God has put in our life. And I'm not saying we'll be perfect. <sighs> But we have to be so desperate for the glory of God that everything that we do is motivated by love for God and love for our fellow neighbor. We have a fallen will. There is a battle between our regenerate self that is sanctified positionally and we are in the process of sanctification and the flesh that is still dead in sin. And we are called in the midst of that battle, that war, to walk in holiness. And we can only win that war, fight that battle, accomplish that calling by the Spirit of the living God. So friends, take this to heart. 2024 is going to be a year that you are going to be challenged. Not because it's anything special with 2024. Yeah. But because God tells us that we're going to follow in the steps of Christ. And if Christ was persecuted, you'll be persecuted. If they hate Christ, they're going to hate you. Get it settled right now. You're going to suffer at some point. You're still, therefore, those also who suffer according to the will of God, shall entrust their souls to a faithful creator in doing what is right. Friend, just read First Peter. So the, the, the challenge is personal holiness. I can't control my wife or other people do things. All I can do is control who I am and what God tells me I should do in his word. And that's what I'm that's what I'm I'm just encouraging you. Be in daily reading of God's word. Be daily and often in prayer. Be daily and often in, in encouraging other believers. We need it. The days are evil. Alright, so I'm gonna finish with that prayer request. 
got some blood work back. I've got super high cholesterol. Like I'm an overachiever. So if you get this and if you have time, please pray for me. Just pray that the Lord will bless me with the right diet, exercise. Uh, I've had, you know, some back issues, things like that. So hopefully I can get up and get moving and may the Lord find favor in that. Um, there's also for 2024 some some requests. I still seek to be allowed to come out of Chick-fil-A and serve fully in United in Christ Jesus. Uh, to be able to really spend more time with videos, preparations, website, the whole thing. And so I'm asking you please to pray for me. Seek the, the Lord's favor in that. And then also if you feel that the Lord has put upon your heart, please come alongside of us. Visit the website that they may all be one.org and go to the uh, page on donate. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, there's nothing else I can... Uh, big shout out again to Luke and to Caleb. Couldn't have done this program without you guys. Above all, glory to God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, because we couldn't have done any of this without him. And I wouldn't want to try to. So with that, until the next program, if you have any thoughts or questions, hey, send me a message. We'll deal with it, Lord willing, and we'll put the board up and we'll get things going. All right. Uh, on behalf of Sasquatch, myself, grace and peace, the Lord Jesus richly bless you in himself, his word, and his salvation. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye now.